so it gives us good coverage. Uh, this is a project that we've been doing in cooperation with the Oklahoma City Zoo. We actually have uh, four of the keepers from the zoo helping us each year. Uh, they work as two teams, and then Melinda Hickman, another biologist, and I uh, serve as two other teams. That way we've got four groups out here, and we can basically knock this whole thing out in, in about four or five days and do the work that one person would be able to do in a month, we're able to take care of in, in one week. Uh, and over the course of the last four years, we've been able to make a number of of comparisons of relative abundance of birds and the habitats that those birds are associated with. Now, birds are active year-round, uh, but, but by and large, they're most active and most vocal in the spring when they're setting up territories, when they're building nests and raising young. And so May and June are really prime times to see birds. Other good times to see birds are November and December when a lot of the wintering birds are coming in and they're very active as well. Uh, and I would say the November, December and the May, June time periods are probably the, the easiest for seeing birds, at least for seeing songbirds, uh, like, like, like our survey is focused on. Now I said earlier, this, this survey is, is really more of an assessment of bird populations. We're trying to get at the distribution of birds, we're trying to get a better understanding of the relative abundance, which ones are more common, which ones are less common, and also trying to get a better handle on the habitat associations of each bird. We find that each habitat type tends to have its own unique bird fauna. And so, and birds are very good, are very particular about uh, focusing in on particular vegetation characteristics. I think it has a lot to do with birds being very mobile. Uh, they can easily move around, relatively easily move around as habitat conditions change so that as an area becomes more wooded or as an area becomes uh, more heavily vegetated, birds that like that can move in. Uh, and conversely, birds that don't like that habitat change will move out. Uh, and we tend to find birds are more specific to habitat than, than mammals and reptiles are. When we, when we conduct these five minute point counts, we record every bird that we either see or hear during that five minute period of time. Uh, now, as many of you that have watched birds probably know, some birds are very active and very vocal and like to sit in exposed perches and sing. Mockingbirds are famous for that. Other birds are a lot more secretive. They'll hide in vegetation and sing or they'll just make just a few call notes. Uh, when we conduct these surveys, at least 80% of the birds that we pick up are actually ones that we hear. They may be 150 yards away, obscured by a bunch of plum thickets, but their voices care and we're able to, we, we have practiced uh, enough to learn the songs and calls um, of, of all of the birds that are found out here. Uh, and, and so we're not as dependent upon sight yeah. as, as say, a, a beginning bird watcher would be. Oh, right over our heads. Oh, and a mockingbird in there. <laughs> well, you know, Melinda, it's, it's fun looking at this video with you. And uh, no doubt, you probably know these loops better than anybody in the state. But if I could put you on the spot, do you have maybe your favorite places on the, each loop? Well, on each loop, yes. I okay. could say that, and that'll be just fine. And, <laughs> and I have enjoyed the videos, and I'm enjoying watching this new clip, too, here. Yeah. Because I, I'm getting to see wildlife a little slow down as opposed to the, the brief glimpses I sometimes get binoculars. But mm -hmm. this, is a, oh, this is an example of one of my favorite places on a loop, and this is at Optima. Uh, which is a great wetland, particularly in the May, June, and again in the September, October, November time. And there's some stilt sandpipers, and <laughs> oh my goodness, there's a oh, yellow-headed blackbird, which uh, at Optima is the only place that it nests in the state, and oh my gosh, we got something going. Oh, avocets, look like they were fighting over some kind of food. Um, <laughs> but n no matter which of the loops that you're um, visiting, there's a birding route for you to take. There's one-day outings for you to take. But in addition to the wildlife part, is there is a cultural uh, heritage type uh, message within each of these loops as well. Mm. And that information of where to go in the loop for that um, particular kind of enjoyment is also there. 
Um, if there's a watchable wildlife event in that loop, that's going to be uh, mentioned uh, with the, the map. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just watching this yellow-headed blackbird <laughs> and that typical blackbird stance you know, straddling the, the cattails and oh, getting something to eat, yum yum. Um, <laughs> but again, each of the loops has that information. And, oh, hey, you don't get to see that every day. No. The white patches on the wings, I have no idea what purpose they serve, but man, <laughs> that bird is just so colorful. And then, and, it, and this is true with all of our loops, that there's some, you know, so different, different types of topography. We've gone from water, now we have this dry landscape, we have this, you know, landscape topography, mm -hmm. and again, wherever there are trees, that's where you're going to be bringing a lot of different wildlife into to view. And um, I, I have a feeling that this is at Beaver Wildlife Management Area. Probably so. Yeah. <laughs> Red-tail hawks. Wow. Oh my gosh, a nest with looks like two, two uh, young ones in there. How neat. Beaver Wildlife Management Area is just full of unexpectedness, but in addition to its prairies and sand sage and prairie dog towns, <laughs> Wherever the trees are, that's where you're going to have a, a lot of the orchard orioles, all, three different species of orioles, and then yucca. Uh -huh. the, uh, oh, look at this. These western kingbirds getting all excited and, <laughs> and talking with each other. Of course, yucca is about the only perch out there in some parts of the area. Lark sparrow, where we've got the short grass. We've got mm -hmm. some buffalo grass there. Looked like it was going after an insect. But <laughs> again, there. Each loop is going to be different. Each has its own unexpectedness. Each has a cultural aspect to it. Each has small town hospitality. And that really just kind of sums up the, the Great Plains Trail of Oklahoma. Well, I know you've worked long and hard on these. And uh, I, I know that no doubt there's going to be a lot of folks in Oklahoma that are going to have their eyes opened, you know, to, to uh, unexpectedness. We keep saying that. <laughs> but. It's so true. I mean, you can see a red-tailed hawk just about anywhere in the state, but, you know, to be able to see it out there in the panhandle alongside so many other species, that's just so exciting. Oh now, you were telling me one time about why why this bird does that. It's it's the northern mockingbird, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's tuned in to movement in, in the vegetation to find its insect, and uh -huh. it does that movement to kind of startle something into moving. And then it uh, sees the movement and goes after it. Oh, so neat. Here's those Orioles again. First year of Bullets Oriole. Uh, and, and the barbed wire fence just reminds me again that, you know, <laughs> there's the the Wild West, the you know, the Western Oklahoma cultural mm -hmm. heritage aspect of it. Uh, gosh, that's a first year orchard oriole. And I bet you that there's a Baltimore Oriole somewhere in this tree. <laughs> well, speaking of the devil, that? there you go. <laughs> there we go. So in one cottonwood tree, you have all three species of Orioles. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And they sound so great. You know, every time I think I know a little bit about birding, I just have to be humbled when I hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it takes practice and really getting out there and learning, but oh, now there's the bird that, you know, represents the prairie. That's mm -hmm. the meadowlark, and because it's singing, I can tell you that that's an eastern meadowlark, and it sounds like it sings when spring is here. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at those little faces, only a red tail hawk mother could love <laughs> but you know these you can tell that beak is made for tearing meat that is a predator bird right there that's pretty okay. exciting well it, these trails are no doubt going i mean this trail and all these loops are are no doubt going to uh, have a lot of people visiting western oklahoma hope so how in the world do you find out about each individual loop well, the, the best way to start is to check out the website for the trail, which is uh, greatplainstrail.com, that easy. And information's updated on that website, and there's an actual road map that you can stow away in your vehicle okay. uh, with you as well. All that will be available on the website. Oh, that's great. You know, this has been a lot of fun, like I said before. <laughs> and uh, I know I'm excited about maybe getting out there this summer and uh, maybe taking my family on a couple of those loops. Good, grab you your road You want to jump in board? You board know I do, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me today, Melinda, yeah. and thank you as well for all of us at your wildlife department. 
We'll see you somewhere new next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.